I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental. Should we talk beasts? Let's talk beasts. Top 10 beast mode fragrances. Stay tuned. So what are beast mode fragrances? It's kind of a weird term, really. I think it existed long before I started making YouTube videos. By the way, if anyone knows who came up with this phrase, beast mode, to refer to big performing and long lasting fragrances, let me know because I have no idea. But I think it kind of works. I think nowadays it's become such a part of the fragcom vocabulary that if you say something's beast mode, it's just a very quick and easy way of saying something performs really, really well. So we've got good performing fragrances. We've got very good performing fragrances, but then we've got beast mode fragrances. Beast mode fragrances are another level. They introduce you before you even get into a room. People smell them around you. The projection is massive. The sillage is just off the scale. They're fragrances that are big, okay? I have picked 10 fragrances out of my collection. I'm sure there are maybe bigger or more well-known beast mode fragrances out there, but I've chosen 10 fragrances from my collection that to me, I think are beast mode. So let's get into it. The first fragrance I'm gonna talk about is from a house called Bortnikov. They are very well known for using high quality natural materials. The fragrance I'm talking about is called Oud Monarch. If you're quite new to fragrances, or if you've just previously owned very mass appealing, crowd pleasing designer fragrances, you might find something from this house to be a little bit challenging. But what I will say about this fragrance is once you get past the opening, which can be a little skanky, it's a little animalic, but in a really high quality oody type of way. But if you're not used to smelling that, Oud, then you may think it's a little bit too much. If Oud isn't your thing, you are definitely gonna get Oud, it is called Oud Monarch, then give it 20, 30 minutes. It's, I like the opening, okay? I'm just saying if you're not into Oud, you might find it a little strong, but give it 20 to 30 minutes and it settles down to smooth, sweet, chocolatey goodness. There's some white florals in here as well. Uh, Dmitry Bortnikov likes to use frangipani in his fragrances, which is present in this one. So you get that slight indolic character that you get to white florals. It's not a very floral fragrance. That is not the most prominent accord at all in this. The most prominent accord is kind of the vanilla and the chocolate and the tobacco in here. So it's not a floral fragrance. The florals are just supporting really nicely in the heart. It's very rich, but it's got enough animalic punchiness to give it some structure and backbone and just veer it away from becoming an overly cloyingly sweet gourmand fragrance. Oud Monarch to me is exceptional quality with exceptional performance. Not the cheapest, but with this you get what you pay for. For the next one, we're sticking with chocolate because I love chocolate. This is the opposite end of the pricing spectrum though. This is from the house of Louis Cardin and it's called Sacred. With Sacred, we get vanilla, caramel, dark chocolate, and this really does smell niche quality, which makes the price of this even more astonishing. You can pick this up for around 30 pounds or $30, I think a little bit less. You can get it even cheaper with that using my code, FM20. So I'll leave a link to Louis Cardin's UK website in the description below the video, and uh, go and use my code because this is, um, if you like gourmand fragrances, it's a pretty safe blind buy. I don't condone blind buying at all, but usually something of this quality is much, much higher price. I'm not quite sure how Louis Cardin are managing to offer this fragrance at this price, but Sacred is just an absolute beauty. It hangs around all day, it's not going anywhere, it lasts and lasts. It's a cosy, comforting, classy, gourmand style fragrance that just hangs around all day. The next one is my favourite from the house of Parfum de Mali. If you know my channel, if you know me, you'll know which fragrance this one is. It is, of course, Carlisle. Carlisle to me is like a sweet spiced apple pie with a rich woody backbone. I'm not quite sure 
what Parfum de Mali do when they create their fragrances, but a lot of them, a lot of their heavier fragrances, like Carlisle, have this DNA that adds this richness, this density, and it smells incredibly natural. It's sweet, it's crowd-pleasing, it's gonna give you a massive all-day scent bubble. The sillage of this one is gonna be off the charts. It's kind of a little bit like Herod and Ogen got together and had a little baby and Carlisle popped out. So this is almost a combination of those two fragrances. It's not a direct hybrid of those two, but it just has little things that remind me of each of those fragrances. So you get that nice sweet cherry tobacco, which I pick up a little bit in Carlisle, and then the apple from Ocean. So this is very mass appealing as well as being beast mode. So not only is this gonna be pleasing everyone around you, you're gonna be really pleasing yourself with this one. Carlisle is the shizzle. So we've had a few niche, let's go designer. And in my experience, there aren't too many designer fragrances that I would say are beast mode. I'm not sure why this is, maybe it's because of the quality of materials, the, um, the naturals that may be used in a lot of niche fragrances that just add to this beast mode quality. And scents that are designed to be you know, mass appealing, often you don't want them beast mode because they might be too much for some people. But this designer fragrance is certainly beast mode. It's an eau de toilette as well, which to me is just astonishing. You'll know this fragrance, most people have smelled it, most people own it. It is Dior Sauvage. I still really enjoy Sauvage. I don't wear it that often these days just because I've got a lot of fragrances to get through and I'm always testing new ones, but now and then I will go back to Sauvage and I don't know if you're like me, sometimes do you kind of get up in the morning and just feeling the mood for Sauvage. You can almost smell it. You know when you want to wear a fragrance, you almost smell it before you put it on? Well, sometimes I wake up and I can almost smell the Sauvage before I apply it, and it's those days that I put it on. So it's not often, but now and then, I do still really enjoy it. You get bergamot with this, you get a lot of ambroxin, you get all the ambroxin with this one. So a lot of people, criticize this fragrance for being a little too screechy, a little too metallic, perhaps you could say abrasive in the opening. It is a very, very loud opening. It makes no apologies for itself. It's certainly not a subtle opening, but I'm okay with that. I don't mind it. I think the opening is fine. I don't find it too abrasive or obnoxious, and I've never had any complaints when I'm wearing this one. The fact that Sauvage has the performance that it does, and it's an eau de toilette concentration, blows my mind. This is a big scent, massively performing scent, very mass appealing. The downside to this is it's popular. You might smell this one around like everywhere you go in the world. It's that popular. So if you don't want to wear a scent that you think you're going to smell off other people, this one might not be for you. But if you're okay with that, I think this is probably the most mass appealing beast mode fragrance on the market today. The next fragrance is loved by everyone I've ever met. So maybe it's not loved by everyone in the whole world, but everyone I've ever introduced this scent to has loved it and has asked for um, a decant off me or has gone out and bought their own bottle. This is from Byron Parfums. It's my favorite still from their lineup and it's The Chronic. This is a beautiful, sweet, creamy sandalwood fragrance with some cinnamon. It's got a bit of bubblegum sweetness in there. Reminds me a little bit of Maison Margiela's By the Fireplace, but it's fluffier and creamier than that fragrance. It's not quite as woody, it doesn't have the roasted chestnut accord, but it's kind of in a, a similar genre. This one I think projects so much in its first couple of hours because it has pepper as a top note. So the spiciness of the pepper just really throws this off the skin and you get a good projection for a couple of hours. It continues to project all throughout its life for 10 hours plus. A lot of fragrances get to that seven, eight hour mark and they've become a pleasant skin scent if detectable at all. Not only does this go way beyond that, it projects for the whole of its life as well. So you really do um, get your value for money with this one. The Chronic is like a masterclass on how to make a very natural, high quality, mass appealing smelling fragrance that also performs amazingly. Very deserving of beast mode status. Join the Scent Geeks every Monday as we podcast about all things fragrance. You'll find us anywhere you can usually find a podcast. Links are in the description below this video. See you there, geeks. We've got a Tom Ford next. 
This one is one of my favourites from the Private Blend and probably the biggest performing fragrance of the Private Blend uh, of the ones that I've tried anyway. It's the amazing Tuscan Leather. <sighs> I just find this smell to be incredible. The raspberry, the leather, there's some jasmine in here as well. When I first smelled this fragrance, it blew my mind. I just hadn't smelled anything like this before. I smelled this and Oudwood in around a similar time period, so I just fell in love with the Private Blend because I thought if they're bringing out fragrances of this quality, then I'm a big fan. One of the first times I wore this, I loved it so much, I drowned myself in it. Not only did I spray it all over, I had uh, an interpretation of Tuscan Leather, the Perfume Parlor oil, and I rolled the oil everywhere. I walked out of the house smelling like a walking bottle of Tuscan Leather, and I remember I was gonna go meet my friend in the cinema, and we were sitting in the cinema watching this film, and I was getting really, really strong wafts of Tuscan Leather all the way through. I was actually getting a little bit self-conscious about whether people around me were, were finding it a little bit too much. Anyway, I enjoyed it, which is the main thing. For non-frag heads, this could be a little bit challenging, a little bit divisive because it is such a strong and potent smell. This is not the original formulation, I believe it used to be stronger. So if it was stronger then wow, that, that must have been the beast mode fragrance to rule all beast mode fragrances because I still class this current formulation, which is I think a year, maybe two years old, um, I still class this as beast mode. So if you're a non-frag head, then sample first. Also, word of warning, if you're a guy and you're thinking of buying this and it's important to you that your partner or wife enjoys this fragrance, maybe sample it first. Aventus is not on this list because to me, it's not beast mode. It's not bad, but it's not beast. This one, however, is from Nishane. It's Hatchabat. So this one has similar DNA to Aventus, so it's got that pineapple in there, but it doesn't have that smoky woods accord that Aventus has. It's a little greener, and the oak moss is more detectable in this, so it's got almost this green spongy oak moss texture. I'd say it's not quite as sharp and refined as Aventus. This one is a little rougher around the edges, it's a little more scattershot, but with that, comes bigger performance. This lasts all day. If you like the Aventus DNA, but you want something that is bigger in performance, then Hatchivat's got you back. The next one I'm gonna talk about, I would say currently is probably my favorite coffee-based fragrance. It's not just pure photorealistic coffee. There's loads of other things going on. There's gourmandish notes, there's caramel, there's rum, there's burnt sugar. It's dark, it's brooding, it's sensual. From Alexandria Fragrances, it's Dark Night. I'd say that this is one of my favourite fragrances from Alexandria Fragrances. It is, of course, based on By Killian's Black Phantom. I do have a small decant of that. And to be honest, they smell very, very similar. I'd struggle to tell them apart if someone did a blind test with me. It's rum, it's caramel, it's coffee, it's chocolate, it's sweet. It's a gourmand lover's dream. For some reason, this fragrance makes me think of Johnny Depp's character in Pirates of the Caribbean. This seems like the kind of fragrance Captain Jack Sparrow would wear because it's got that rum accord which you associate with pirates, but he's got some swagger, he's got some character, he's a lovable rogue. So if you're a lovable rogue type of character and you like sweet fragrances that have massive performance, then Alexandria Fragrances Dark Knight is absolutely amazing. Or if you can stretch to it, by Killian's Black Phantom. So there seems to be a bit of a theme with these beast mode fragrances. A lot of them are sweet, thick, rich, gourmand type scents. I think those types of compositions just lend themselves to big projection, massive performance. So this one is no exception. From Navitas Parfums, it's Absolutio. <music> Cherry almond, toffee apple, caramel, chocolate. Is your mouth watering yet? It should be because when you smell this fragrance, it makes you think of those things. It's rich, it's heavy, which is why it's such a big performing fragrance. This one probably works best in cooler temperatures. So autumn, winter, I think this excels. Although if you get a cool spring evening or even a cool summer evening, then I think you could get away with this. Speaking of evenings, 
date nights. I think this is a very sensual fragrance that would be perfect for date nights. I also love Vertus from Navitus, which again, I think is probably equally as big in performance um, as this one. I don't have a bottle of that, so that's why I'm including this one in the video. But it's classy, it's rich, it's sophisticated, really, really good stuff. The next fragrance is an absolute belter. This one is wild. The note breakdown on this is like reading an essay on fragrance notes from Roger. It's Diaghilev. So there's a lot going on with this. It's a fruity floral sheep. Can we just have a moment there for my pronunciation of sheep? How was it, Clemence? If you're watching this, it was probably it was probably crap. Um, this is a fragrance that has so many notes. It's so complex, but like with Roger's fragrances, it manages to be just classy and smooth and rounded. It doesn't smell too busy. It doesn't smell like there's too much going on, even though there is a lot going on with this. If you're new to fragrances, you might smell this and think it's a bit too much. It might be a little bit too challenging. You might not really be able to get your head around what it's doing. But if you're a fan of classical style, big, perfumery then I think you would really love Diaghilev. It's certainly worth smelling. It's pretty cheap. It's not even £800. It's only £795. So you might want to start saving up because it's not a cheap fragrance. Although I would definitely say sample first, go into a store, try it out or use a site that can give you you know smaller samples do check it out first but well worth checking out if you think that you might like this if you like big classical perfumery then definitely get your nose on Diaghilev. The quality of this fragrance is so on the money it smells expensive it is expensive but it's the type of fragrance that you learn a little bit more about each time you wear it i feel like every time i put this fragrance on i go oh i'm, I'm getting that from it and the next time I'll, I'll get something else so you really do go on a journey with this fragrance yes it's going to be out of a lot of people's price range most people in this world will not pay 795 pounds for a bottle of fragrance although there are some people out there that will people who want to invest in hot perfumery or high perfumery it is the absolute quintessential shining example of luxury niche fragrance if you invest in this you get the whole package you get the prestige of the brand you get the bottle you get an amazing scent in my opinion Diaghilev is one of the most exquisite beast mode fragrances you will ever get your nose on. Serious. <sighs> so there are my list of beast mode fragrances. What are your most beastly of fragrances? I would love to know. To be honest, I don't always go for beast mode, but often I really do like a beast mode fragrance because to me it just often reflects the fact that it's high quality. I don't know about you, but when I put a fragrance on, I want to smell it all day if possible. Not all my fragrances are like that. Sometimes you've got to deal with having a lovely fragrance that lasts four, five, six hours, and that's fine. But I love getting wafts all throughout the day. I just feel like you're getting good value for money when, when you get a beast mode fragrance. So let me know what your favorite ones are. These were mine. These are the ones that work for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good. Peace more!